I'm Victoria from the Jewish Chronicle and I'm at Cameo Kitchens today where I'm going to be showing you how to make the most delicious chicken soup. Chicken soup has to be the most iconic of Jewish dishes. It's steaming, golden, salty, liquid, it's lovely. What I have here are my uh, basic ingredients. So I've got carrots, which I'm going to peel and keep them in very large pieces. I'm going to halve them because they're going to cook for quite a long time. When you cook something for a long time, I'm also just topping and tailing them. The reason for the peeling and the topping and tailing is in case you want to use them to serve later. Chopping them in half, putting them in the pot. I'm keeping them large because they're cooking for a long time and I want them to hold together. Same with the parsnip that I've already peeled. The parsnip adds some really nice sweetness to the soup. Halve it in the pot. Uh, you're also going to need celery, which I've already washed. Get organic if you can, and the same with the carrots and the parsnips, because it gives it better flavour, and I just think there's something nice about such a, a warming dish being good for you, really good for you as well. Halving those celery stalks, putting them in the pot. Uh, then we need onions. Again, you want to keep these large um, because they're, you don't want them melting into nothingness. Take off that top part so you've got a nice flat surface to cut on. Take off a bit of the skin, but you want to keep that skin in because it's going to give extra colour to your soup. Um, then you just cut through the root end. Reason being, that root's going to hold your onion together. Put that in there. Now we're going to repeat the process with onion number two. So I don't like the rooty bits floating in. I made it the other day and there was a root left in there and I thought I had a spider in the pot. Not very nice. So, onion in. We're also going to use some garlic. Add some more flavour. The more vegetables, the better really, just to add lots of layers of flavour. So with the garlic, keep the skin on and you're just going to use the flat of your knife and the heel of your hand to, can you hear that little crack? Uh, just so that it's going to release a bit more flavour. In that goes, I probably use three cloves of garlic. You don't want it overtly tasting of garlic, but um, as I say, you want a, a hint of that in the pot. So that's my three cloves of garlic. Then I'm also going to put in a bay leaf, some parsley. I've mostly used the stalks. You might as well keep the leaves for garnish or for something else. Um, and the stalks have just as much flavour, and probably more flavour, so put them in your pot. Um, also, I like to put in a handful of peppercorns, which you would use in a stock. Um, it, again, adds some more flavour. So that's all your vegetables. Then, obviously, the main ingredient, the star of the show, the chicken. So I like to use, um, obviously, a kosher chicken, which you can see by this uh, little blue tag. There's evidence of the kosher chicken. Put the chicken in the pot. And I also like to pep up the flavour with some chicken carcasses. Very attractive. But they're a good way, a cheap way, of getting in lots more flavour because that's the bit really where the goodness is and lots of flavour from those bones. So in go the carcasses. And the next stage will be to put some water in the pot. Once you get back to the stove, so I almost forgot to add about a tablespoon of rock salt, just to help pep up that flavour. And you're going to put it on a very high heat, well the highest heat, and bring that up to a boil. So as you can see, what's happening now, um, while it's coming up to the boil, there's a certain amount of foam that comes to the top. Now you don't want that foam in your soup, because it's going to make it cloudy, and it's just so much nicer to have a beautiful clear chicken soup, which is what we're all aiming for. It's starting to come up to the boil, but when it comes up to a rapid boil, you're then going to immediately turn the heat down. So after about an hour, an hour and a half, depending how big the chicken is, you should have a gorgeous, really, really chickeny smelling broth. What we're going to do is to remove the chicken from the pot. We're going to take out the chicken, the bones, the vegetables. It's not a, an easy task removing this chicken. Managed it in one. That doesn't always happen. If you've got chicken bits flying all around your kitchen, that would be 
the scene you see in my kitchen most Fridays. Ideally, I would do this over your sink because chicken soup built over your kitchen is very greasy. There you are, empty every last drop into the pot. Now, as that's slightly full and I've got bones to go back in there, what I would do is return it to the original cooking pot. In the meantime, I'll strip the chicken off the bones. As you can see, it's beautiful. It's just, oh, the, bo the bone is just coming out of the chicken without my having to do an awful lot to it. But there's still flavor in those bones and all the goodness. So I, I would definitely put them back into the pot, give them another slow poach, probably for an hour. Okay, so when your um, chicken bones have had an extra hour in the broth, then what you're going to do, and you've had a chance to clear up your kitchen, get rid of all that chickeny mess, you're going to pour the broth through the sieve, the colander, one more time. Okay, I'm going to put that back there. Put the colander away. And bring my pot back to the stove. So have a taste of it. Now it should taste really chickeny. And that's lovely. Wait for it to cool down to room temperature. Well, in fact, to, yeah, absolutely to room temperature. Put a lid on it, and then you're gonna refrigerate it overnight. And that's it, job done for today. So the next day, after you've refrigerated your chicken soup, the strained um, liquid, what you're going to do is retrieve it from the fridge, obviously, um, and scoop the chicken fat that will have risen to the top, off the top, and you're going to save that because that's fantastic for roast potatoes. What it's also very good for um, is to use in your matzo balls if you're going to make them. So you can see it's really thick chicken fat and that would be pretty horrible if you had it in your soup. So quite tasty but not terribly healthy. So once you've uh, taken off all the fat, the next thing to do would be to warm the chicken soup through. So I put back into the pot some of the chicken that I took off that chicken carcass yesterday. I've shut, um, ripped it into bite-sized pieces, so that's warming up in the soup. I've also got um, a few of the mo some matzo balls that I've made to go in there. I'm going to taste the soup and make sure I'm happy with the flavour without burning my mouth. And it is delicious. I don't actually need any salt or pepper or anything. You may want to add a bit of salt just to pep up the flavour. I've taken the carrots out of the pot from yesterday. The other vegetables I'm not so keen on because I don't think they, they last so well and they tend to get slightly mushy. So the carrots are okay. And if you think your carrots are too mushy, you can um, prepare fresh carrots the next day and cook them in the broth when you heat it up. So a few little bits of carrot cooked in the broth are quite delicious. I'm going to pop a couple of matzo balls in there just to show you how we would present it. And while those are warming through, I will just chop up the parsley, which we'll sprinkle on the top. So when it's hot and ready to go, pop that in the bowl with a little bit of the chicken. Add some carrots. Just pop a little bit of parsley over that. I challenge anyone not to say that's absolutely delicious. That's it, that's my perfect chicken soup.